There's so much room back here. There's nothing here now. <laughs> Hello. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin and today we're listening to Atomic Rooster, which is a phenomenal name, uh, with their song Death Walks Behind You off of their album of the same name, Death Walks Behind You, which was released in 1970. So you guys have mentioned Atomic Rooster before um, and I've seen a couple of their videos popping up in my recommendations on YouTube. Haven't clicked any, but as I was looking through the discography, Let's be honest, this album cover looks kind of cool, it looks a little bit metal. I would love to hear the first song off of this album, and it kind of sounds cool from the title. So this is how choices are made sometimes on the channel. Your recommendations, your comments, and your messages do count, but sometimes I'm just drawn in by a simple image. That's kind of how I found uh, Rare Bird. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day, a wonderful morning, and a beautiful night. So you can join me on Twitter, you can join me in the comments down below. I hope that, I just really hope that you're, you're doing well. I don't know how else to portray that to you. I just, I hope that you're okay. I hope that everything's okay. That's all I can say. Uh, you, uh, I said everything that I need to say. This is Atomic Rooster with Death Walks Behind You, which hopefully it doesn't. Thank you. 
I've said it before, and I don't want to speak too preemptively, but correct me if I'm wrong, and I actually want to know your opinions as well. Because for me, looking back at all of this music that I've heard now on the channel, the 70s really seems like the most explosive period in musical history, at least in modern musical history. Because there were just so many genres and so many sounds that were coming out at the time that were, were new, were revolutionary. And for me, looking back, pretty much <laughs> as a music lover, of course, but almost like a historian, like going back and finding technologies, finding sounds, digging them up and being like, wait, they had this back then? Wait, they were making this back then? So this song um, sounds like metal. This song sounds like not, not like complete metal, but the riffing, the heaviness, the density of the music, the chaotic nature, the tense atmosphere of it all was like, was, was, was metal. Now, like I said, it's not straight metal. It does remind me a little bit of Black Sabbath, but it's not like straight metal. This is leaning towards that end of the spectrum, at least in the harder, heavy rock session of, you know, pre-metal, I guess you would say. First of all, I think that the intro is so cool. About halfway in just the intro alone, I was hoping that there was going to be this big riff drop and I, I got the big riff drop. The way that it builds up, it actually reminds me a little bit of like industrial metal and industrial music in just the machine like movement of the instruments and how they work together, almost scraping against each other and moving like clockwork. This is my idea of clockwork. This is, I guess I could have done, I could have done the robot, but <laughs> that's why I didn't do the robot. The screeching of the guitar. The piano, the bass, it seems is like kind of chugging a little bit in the back. These descending chords, it's almost like descending into madness. I think that that is a really cool intro. I think that's very effective because, I, I mean, for me, you know, not knowing what to expect, even though the album cover does, you know, kind of hint towards a creepier vibe, even though the song title and the album title do kind of hint towards a darker vibe. It's nice that we get that darker vibe in the music itself because the album cover can look a certain way and then you listen to the music and it's like, wait, this is what I bought? <laughs> and then... What? <laughs> that is such a good opening riff. That sets this whole song immediately into motion. That's a moving kind of riff. That's for me, that's a dancing kind of riff. You know, I, I mean, not like dancing, but you know, like dancing. The little bites of organ on the end of it sound really cool. The guitar and bass sound like they're pretty much doubling up on each other, just adding to this heavier nature of this uh, the verse. And then the singing comes in. And the singing, I'll admit, I didn't love the singing, more so because it was a little bit unrefined, I felt. But when it comes to harder music and heavier music and metal and genres such as that, sometimes that unrefinement is actually better. You don't necessarily want polish in a vocalist. Uh, John Ducan, uh, who's doing the guitars, the lead vocals, and the bass. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of work. He takes this song by the reins and he just spits grit and rock and stone into it as he's singing about death being behind you. Drumming is fantastic as well. I really like when it breaks into this gallop, into this higher tempo. Once again, the riff changes and it still maintains that same heaviness, but now the pace is picked up just like in a lot of classic metal. Vincent Crane is on the organ and the piano and on the backing vocals as well. And you can hear him switching between organ and piano. Like right there, he was playing piano and of course in the beginning as well. But then in some of those other riffs and those other verses, he's kind of jabbing at the organ, providing that more like, not terrifying, but that almost horror-like kind of, kind of sound. Because when you think of an organ, especially in horror movies, it's like, Okay, that's not an organ, but I can't really make an organ noise with my mouth. So you just have to believe me. But the organ can be a very jarring instrument, especially played at a heavy and high tempo in quick succession. This riff is my favorite riff in the whole song. That is just solid the whole way around. Um, the drumming, which is done by Paul Hammond, who surprisingly is not playing on the Hammond organ, keeping up with the pace, changing tempos appropriately, not necessarily doing anything too flashy, but there are some moments in there that definitely show that there's something uh, of interest perhaps in other songs. And it looks like Carl Palmer was in this band as well. Mm. And then I like here these 
quieter harmonies in the back. Um, I'm assuming the backing vocals, as I mentioned before. Um, but I like how they say Death Walks Behind You, and they sound a little bit relegated to the backdrop of the rest of the song. So I think that's cool how they play into that part of Death Being Behind You, as the vocals are, in a sense, produced and placed behind you in the arrangement. And then... What? <laughs> that is so cool. And there's even some moments in there where in between some of the riffs, some more piano is brought in and the piano almost sounds like it's playing blues, but then it kind of transforms and plays back into the main theme of the song, which is just a little bit more surreal. Like this little interlude almost sounded blues for a second. Could be just me before it kicks it back into high gear. I mean, that was really cool. Um, and like I said before, one of the surprising things for me is hearing that this was uh, produced in 1971. The lyrics, Death Walks Behind You, which is repeated four times, uh, lock the door, switch the light, you'll be so afraid tonight, hide away from the bad, count the nine lives you've had, start to scream, shout for help, there is no one by your side to forget what is done, seems so hard to carry on. Luck is false, that it's near, bring yourself to understand, it's your fate or what's cast, point a finger at yourself. Those lyrics are pretty much uh, repeated throughout the song along with the chorus of Death Walks Behind You. So I pretty much just take that pretty literally actually like death is eventually coming for all of us. Death is walking behind us. It may be 30 miles out. It may be 12 meters out. It may be right behind you right now. But regardless, <laughs> at some point death is coming for all of us. Um, and here it's talking about no matter what you do, you cannot evade that, which is an unfortunate life lesson. The lyrics are fine. Honestly, I don't think the lyrics are like anything too standout-ish. It's really the music and those impressive riffs that came in uh, that really have my attention, uh, especially from Atomic Rooster. All right, so this was a good choice. I like this. Of course, I want to know what you guys thought. You can join me on Twitter. You can join me in the comments down below. Sorry for slamming the table and probably blowing out the microphone a little bit. It does happen. This is a very cheap table. This is, this is Ikea wear. Uh, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. Don't forget to let me know some other songs from Atomic Rooster that I should be looking into. And um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.